Have you ever wondered what a Diophantine equation is? A Diophantine equation is an equation that only allows integer solutions. And it seems like a subtle detail, but it really has some interesting properties. And these interesting properties are very useful and very widespread when it comes to solving number theory problems, like the, this one, this one, or this problem, or even more complicated ones, as you can see here. By the way, you should also check out the previous video on algebraic number theory, which we discussed algebraic techniques in number theory. But today we're solving integer equations. And there's a key difference between integer equations versus regular equations. Well, it's an integer, and that gives us useful properties. For example, and there's some techniques that are only specific to solving those integer equations. So let's look at some strategies. So some main strategies are to take mods of numbers. So we can take, for example, mod, mod, we can take the mods of numbers, which will give us some useful conditions. So what does mods you give us? Mods over here, if we take mods, we can show that there are no solutions to a Diophantine equation. And we can also show that there's only a specific type of solution. Another strategy is we can bound the possible values for different terms. And this is generally useful when there's only a finite number of solutions. Another useful strategy is that factoring right there. So factoring, there's various factorizations we learned in the algebra classes, and those are often useful in Diophantine equations. Also, you can often make smart substitutions. So smart substitutions are very powerful because they can make your expression much simpler. And another key thing is you can look for conditions on what can be, on what must be multiples or divisors of variables. So let's say you find out that a is 6k. a is a variable. You know it's a multiple of 6, so you can say that a is 6k. So now instead of having this arbitrary condition, you now have tangible variables to back it up. Now, Let's see an example of what a Diophantine equation really is. How many right triangles have integer side lengths a and b and a hypotenuse of length b plus 1 where b is less than 100? Hmm. Well, let's start off by applying the Pythag theorem, because that's something we definitely know. We have a squared plus b squared is equal to the hypotenuse b plus 1 squared. Let's expand the right side. b squared plus 2b plus 1. Now we subtract b squared from both sides. And just like that, we're left with a squared is 2b plus 1. Hmm, this is interesting. We've got two variables, but only one equation. How do we solve this? Well, the key thing, like I said, that's special the Diophantine equations is the integer condition. The legs are integers. And integers, that's a very useful information because now we know that a can't be a fraction or decimal. So we don't have to solve the equation. Rather, we can find out which values work with their condition b is less than 100. So if b is less than 100, then 2b plus 1 will be less than 2 times 100 plus 1, which is 201. The maximum possible value for b is 99. So the maximum possible value for 2b plus 1 will be 199. So 2b plus 1 can't, is at most 199. It's, let's say it's less than or equal to 199. Okay, that's cool. But let's plug it into this equation now to really get what we're trying to find. This is less than or equal to 199. So that means that a squared is less than or equal to 199. Let's take the square root of both sides. We get a is less than or equal to 14. 14 squared is 196. 15 squared, 225, too big. Too big, not the number too big. So a is less than or equal to 14. Can it be any number 14 or less? Well, let's try some values. So let's say a is 14, then this becomes 196. If b is an integer, can 196 equal 2b plus 1? 
Well, if b is an integer, two b plus one is odd because this is a multiple of two and this is an additional one. So we, this is not allowed. An even number can't equal an odd number. That doesn't work. And we'll actually find out that for every even a, that's not possible. Because for even a, that's even. But this right side here is odd. So, so then what should we do from there? Well, from here, we can just see that only odd values work. So, for example, we have 13, 11, 9, 7, 5, 3, and so on. And 1, of course. So we're asked to find how many of these values exist. So now all we have to do is to count the number of such values. And it turns out that this, there's only a total of seven possibilities here. But the key thing to see here is that when a squared is one, a is equal to, a squared is one, then two b plus one is equal to one as well, which means b is zero. Can be b be can a leg of a right triangle be zero? Well, that would be a sad right triangle because it would be a line at that point. There's no right triangle anymore. It's just a line. B can't be zero. You can't have a leg be zero in a right triangle. So it's actually six that it actually works. So six right there, our answer to this problem. Summarize. We look use the Pythag theorem. We looked at our integer condition, and then we look narrow down the possibilities. And this is represents what a diophantine equation truly is. Next off, we've got another cool problem. There exist unique positive integers, again, this diophantine word always coming up, integer x and y, that satisfy x squared plus 84x plus 2008 is y squared. Find x plus y. So it seems like this, this almost seems like a, a binomial expansion, doesn't it? It looks a lot like x squared plus something at plus two plus two xy plus y squared. So how can we come maybe kind of rewrite it in terms of that way? The key thing here is x plus 42 squared. x plus 42 squared is x squared plus 84x plus 42 squared. And if you watch my squares video, you know that this is just 1764. But we're looking for x squared plus 84x plus 2008. So it's going to be x plus 42 squared plus what's 2008 minus 1764? That's 244, right? So this is y squared. So y squared minus x plus 42 squared is 244. Now let's take a look at what, we're, what this right side is. This right side, difference of squares, factorizations. That's y minus x plus 42 times y plus x plus 42. Cool. What are the factors of 244? 244 is 2 squared times 61. 2 squared times 61, and those must be these values right here. So what should we do to solve this here? We might just look at the factors, and then we would be able to solve for our answer. So the factors of 244, well, let's write them out. Well, we could have 1 times 244, 2 times 1, 2, 2, 4 times 61. And those are all the factors. And notice that this term right here is bigger than this because the right term is y plus x plus 42 and the left term is y minus x plus 42. So the right term will always be bigger. So we cannot have the reverse true. Okay, so from here, Let's look at the possibilities and let's solve for them. 
So in this over here, we have the possibilities. The key thing to notice here is that y minus x plus 42 and y plus x plus 42, they only differ by two times x plus 42, right? This thing here is two times x plus 42 bigger than that thing over there. Which, but what is two times x plus 42? That is an even number. So that means these two numbers are different only by an even number. So what does that mean? That means this possibility can't work. And this possibility can't work. Because this one has a difference that's an odd number. And this one also has a difference that's an odd number. So we can say goodbye to those expressions. They don't work. They aren't. They don't have good parity. So now we're just left with this. And now it's y minus x plus 42 is 2. And y plus x plus 42 is 122. We add them up to get rid of that x plus 42 term. 2y, 124. And then we're left with the fact that y is 62. We plug that in. 62 minus 60 is 2. So x equal to 18. But we're looking for x plus y. 62 plus 18 gives us our final answer, 80. So the trick here was we completed the square, used difference of squares, and then we just saw that the parity didn't work. Next off, we've got another cool problem from the A means. Let A, B, and C be positive integers such that A to the 5, A to the 5 equals B to the 4, and C cubed is D squared. We also have that c minus a is 19. Determine d minus b. Hmm. What? We have so we have four variables and three equations again. How are we gonna do that? This seems way too many. We, we need to use the integer condition somehow. So the key thing here is that we're looking for d minus b. So we're trying to maybe you, you, you want to somehow find d in terms of c and b in terms of a because we've got these equations that relate c and d and we've got another pair of equations that relate a and b so if we have two equations that are related then we want to try and maybe find c and a because then we can find d and b from these equations c and a well there's even for integers there's so many possibilities we could have 20 minus 1, 21 minus 2, 22 minus 3, and so on. There's too many possibilities. There's an infinite number of possibilities. Way too many for us to count. What do we know? Well, we know all four variables are integers. Aha! So if d is an integer, then this right side over here is a perfect square. So if we take c cubed and c cubed is a perfect square, then c must be a perfect square. Because if c is not a perfect square, then cubing it won't make it a perfect square either. So we have c perfect square. Anything else? What about the relationship between e, a and b? Well, right, the right side here is a fourth power. So by the same logic, a must be a fourth power. So a is fourth power because if a is not a fourth power, then a to the 5 will not be a fourth power because we're just essentially multiplying all the exponents by 5. And that won't make the exponents all multiples of 4. So c is square, a is a fourth power. Now, we still have a bunch of possibilities, or do we have a bunch of possibilities? There's more, much less fourth powers than perfect squares. So let's even see what these fourth powers could be. Well, a could be 1 to the power of 4, 2 to the 4, which is 16, 3 to the 4, which is 81, 4 to the 4, 2, 5, 6, and let's, that's it. Do any of these work? Well, we know this condition, c minus a is 19. So c is a plus 19. So c could be 20, 35, 100, 
and so on. And this C has to be a perfect square. Are any of these a perfect square? A hundred looks a lot like a square, doesn't it? It's 10 squared. So we found a possibility that works. C equal to 100 and A equal to 81. Let's find D and B. So let's go back to our equations over here. A to the 5 equals B to the 4. A to the 5, that's 3 to the 4, 2 to the 5 is B to the 4. This, by our exponent rules, 3 to the 20. So B is 3 to the 5, which is 243. Now, for C. C cubed is equal to D squared. We know C, 100. So we solve for D. This left side is also 10 squared cubed, which is 10 to the 6. It is D squared, so D is 10 cubed. D becomes 10 cubed, 1,000. And we were trying to find D minus B. So we do 1,000 minus 243. And what is 1,000 minus 243? That's 7, 5, 7. And that is the final answer. Let's summarize. So we use these conditions there, and we, we found those by looking at what A over here have to be, because over there, we know that A must be a fourth power, and A and C must be a perfect square. And from there, we solved, and we saw, looked at the possibilities, and we found one pretty quickly. And then we just plug stuff in, found B and D, and find D minus B, and we got our answer. 757. Seven. That was a great problem. And you can also get all these free practice problems in the book down below. It's completely free to use and download. You can click on it. There's a bunch of examples, problems, videos, solutions, and you're definitely going to want to not miss that. But next off, we're talking about bases. So I'm sure you're all familiar with base 10. For every 10, we regroup to, to the 10th digit. But we don't always regroup by 10. We can regroup by sevens, by fours, by two. You've probably heard of binary before. And that essentially creates a different base system. And this concept of bases is very useful for solving problems like this one, this one. And these are problems that don't deal with our standard number system. So you're going to have to be a little creative to solve them. We'll be doing that next video over there. You can click on it like that.